What's up YouTube, it's Josh Reese here. First year optometry student at Midwestern University in Arizona. Here helping you through your optometry school journey. Today, let's give you the 10 steps to get you through optometry school and let's get started. The first step I have is learn what works for you. There's never gonna be one golden ticket for how you need to study. Every class is hard, some classes are harder for some people everybody's different, you need to learn what works for you. That is the number one important thing that you need to know going into optometry school is not everything's gonna work for you and you don't know what's gonna work for you yet. You've studied some ways in undergrad and you're gonna need to study different ways in optometry school. You're gonna need to change it up and you're gonna need to learn what works for you. So go into school knowing I need to learn what works for me and if you're struggling in optometry school right now and watching this video, you already know this step. So you're already halfway there. So just learn what works for you. You'll spend the first three, four, maybe even quarter of optometry school really struggling because you don't know how to handle it yet. And when you're at the point in the semester when things start coming easier and easier and you're on top of it and you're able to turn assignments in without rushing and you feel like you've got everything covered, it's magical. Wait until then, but try, try, try. Learn what works for you. Study in groups. Study alone. Try a mix of each. Try and find a few different groups. Go to office hours of professors. Pay attention in class, skip class and watch it later. Try everything. Try what works for you and you'll be able to find it. So advice number one, learn what works for you. And advice number two, don't take anyone's advice. Please don't take anyone's advice. Maybe I shouldn't say that because I'm giving advice, but that's the most harmful thing you can do is take someone's advice to be um, the perfect advice out there. I know that Coming into optometry school, I had someone say, oh, what you need to do is you need to study in groups. You're not gonna learn anything if you don't study in groups. Group study is a way to do it. Study in groups 100% of the time. And that's what I did the first week, two weeks of optometry school is I really tried to study in groups. I, um, I really just tried to spend as much time, tried to get big groups, tried to get small groups, just study in groups. And that's the only thing I did. And I was worse off for it. I really felt behind all the time and other people's times were my time and that's, it, it didn't work for me. So I started studying alone and I was able to cut it a little bit where I do one or two group studies a week and the rest is just on my own going through things and that is the way I learn. So don't take people's advice. I wasted some time in optometry school really trying to follow people's advice and go into your semester knowing I'm not gonna take everyone's advice. Try things, but don't take it as that is the thing I need to do. Some teachers will say, you'll only pass this class if you do your homework every day and this and that and this and that. Don't take their advice either. They're not you. As long as you are becoming an optometrist, optometry school is going great. As long as you are, you know, you're gonna be a doctor at the end of this thing, there's periodic growth throughout. As long as you're heading that direction, you're fine. Don't take anyone's advice. The number three thing is don't compare yourself ever at all, ever. What you need to do is you just, you do you. Honestly, it's, it's okay. You're gonna fail some tests, right? If you don't get the grade you want, that's okay. I know class rankings are out there and class rankings is, oh wow, I, yeah, I know I'm three in the class. I wanna to be top 10 in the class, something like that. That's only going to be harmful for you in the long run. Even if you are top in your class, uh, a harmful fixation on that kind of thing is just going to hold you back. I know it might help to get into some rotations or residencies that you wanna do, but in the long run, it doesn't matter. There's a joke that I like, it's, what do you call the person who graduates last in their class in optometry school? Doctor, right? No matter what you do, as long as you graduate, you're there. As long as you get above 60%, you're, you're gonna be an optometrist. So what you need to do is you just take your own pace and go for it. Don't compare yourself ever. 
Even comparing yourself to who you were in undergrad is harmful. You just become a doctor, right? That's all optometry school is. Just get through it and you're gonna do great. Never compare yourself. Step number three. Step number four is find a balance. If you try to go all in on optometry school, you're not going to be able to do it. You have to have a balance in your life of healthy things. You're going to need optometry school as the big chunk in your life, but you need little chunks in there too. You need your extracurriculars that you like to do. You need your family life. You need your friend life. You need, you know, your hobbies, the things that you like. You gotta have to find a, you're going to have to find a balance. And that inappropriate balance is the reason that people fail out of optometry school. There's a counselor who said, no one's ever failed out of this program for the curriculum. Optometry school has never been too hard for someone. And that's true. You're never going to have a class that's too hard for you. You're just going to have an imbalance in your life where it's going to require too, a little more than you're willing to get it. And so there's going to have to be a compromise. And the main reason people fail out is because family things come up that are and should be more important than optometry school right now. And so people either defer a year or something else happens like that. But nobody ever is going to fail out of optometry school for it being too hard. So strike that balance and, and get it. You, you got it. The first few weeks, like I said with the other things, are going to be experimental. So you're not going to have that perfect balance at the beginning, but you'll find that balance and strive for that balance. And that balance might even, as you go on, you might be able to spend a little bit less time studying and have a little bit more family time as you figure out what works for you. So get that balance, but make sure that you have the biggest chunk in optometry school if you want to make it all the way through. Number five is self-care. Now, I suck at this because I hate self-care kind of stuff. It makes me, I don't know, I just don't like it, right? So, but you're gonna need to take some time to de-stress, decompress, and do some self-care. You know, people like to relax in different ways. For me, running, I find really relaxing and getting extra sleep, like most people. But you're gonna need some self-care. And honestly, your patients are going to be better off if you take care of yourself first. So get some self-care. You can run yourself into the ground. Gosh, you can run yourself into the ground. You, the classes are so big, you need to know so much. If you wanna get 100% on everything, you're gonna sacrifice so much of your mental health. You're gonna sacrifice so much of your normal health, of everything, you're sacrificing so much. Don't do that to yourself. Find balance and take care of yourself. Bathe regularly, all right? Just, do, just don't let go of life for optometry school. Do some self-care. And your, your grades will probably improve if you do that too. If you study all day every day, if you burn yourself out, if all you do is get, just get worried about how you're gonna fail, that's not okay. Find, find some self-care. And almost every school I know has resources and counselors. Just spend a few hours a week talking with counselors. Get some self-care out there. Take care of yourself. You are most important. You're not gonna be an optometrist without you. Be you. All right. Number six is treat it like it's a job. Number seven is you gotta honor the process of learning. If you don't respect the learning process, the learning process won't respect you. Some things are gonna require sacrifice and hard thinking before you're going to master them and cramming is not gonna work. If you've gone to class and gone over your notes, studying at the last second, it's not cramming but you gotta respect that learning process. I know anatomy, for example, the day before an anatomy test, you're not gonna get it. You gotta spend some time every day wrapping your mind around the concepts, forming that map, that picture of all of the, the things that, the way that things go and everything. You're gonna have to spend some time developing that before the test. Developing that the night before is not going to happen. You gotta respect the learning process, so don't cram, really, just put some time in every day. Put some time into every subject every day. Put some time into your hardest subject every day. Physics, for example, for me, I, physics was easy in undergrad, or optics, I guess. But optics is hard here because I'm not, I haven't been giving it, I haven't been respecting the learning process there enough. I expect to go to class and get it, which I can with most things, but I have to do a little bit more practice problems, and that's okay gotta respect that process and that you gotta respect that process for other people too. 
Uh, give people in your study group the time of day to go over things that you might already have to help them. If you make it through optometry school together, you're all better off. Okay, number eight, you gotta actively engage in the learning process. If you're a passive learner, that's great. You're not gonna be a good optometrist. For optometry, you're going to need to interact with that information a ton. So repeating things out loud, getting them out of your, like, out of your head and out of your mouth. You, you just have to actively interact with all the information you're presented, especially in the didactic courses and the clinical courses that you're going to have to do. It's going to need to come out of your brain in a different way than a multiple choice exam, all right? You're going to need to interact with this a lot to become a good optometrist. So start doing that now with, especially first year when it's a bunch of just kind of sciencey stuff and not super optometry yet. Interact with the material. You need to, to pay attention in class with as many senses as you can. So if you're paying attention with your ears, your eyes, and with some touch, writing it down in some form, that's going to be best for you. And if you can later interact with it as, with as many um, senses as you can as well, with, your, with speaking it, with hearing it from other people, seeing it from other people, acting it out, right, writing it again, that's going to be the best for you. So go ahead and actively interact and engage with the material, and that's going to make the material become a part of you. Because after all, you're not going to, you're not a doctor because you know things. You're a doctor because you can do things and you've become that uh, patient care provider. All right, the third thing is be able to dissect the information. I know that, in, especially in first year, it is going to be overwhelming the amount of information you're presented and you're going to need to be able to chunk it, be able to say, okay, that's part number one, that's part number two, that's part number three, that's part number four. And you can kind of go through each lecture and be like, okay, so each lecture is going to have this many problems on it and it's gonna be kind of evenly spread. And that's how ultimately how you're going to be able to get through boards too. It's going to be a mile long, but an inch deep. And you need to be able to chunk information, be able to tell you, get that story in a kind of a linear fashion in your head and then once you can tie the whole story together, just then you can fill in some of the details. But if you're able to tell yourself that narrative, put all the information together and chunk it, then you're going to be able to know the details better and those details are going to have a better place in your mind. Um, that's the most important way that I've found to study my basic science classes is if I know the progression of the information, then I know the information. And that'll get me three out of every four questions right, is if you just kind of know where in the information you are. Once you know where in the information you are, then you can start to know those tiny details to get that last few percent right. But you're gonna be 90% of the way there if you can just keep things straight in your head. And that's most helpful because things are third order in optometry school. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but first order, is like memorize this. So if I say this is your nose, you'll be able to say, what's this? A nose. But second and then third order is what most of optometry school is in. So being okay, you know the nose and everything that it affects. Well, let's say I had a problem here. Where would that problem most likely be coming from? So you have to kind of reason through Sherlock Holmes yourself through the information. And if you can chunk it together and know the details and how this detail could relate to this detail because this comes after this, that is what it's going to be like. I know a lot of anatomy in undergrad was point and say, and a lot of the anatomy is here is you have this hole, what goes through it and what would happen if that hole was blocked or something like that. So you need to kind of be the master of the information and have it really down in your head. Last information that'll get you all the way there. You're going to pass optometry school if you know this one thing, and that goes along with the last thing. It's study to pass before you study to ace. So you need to make sure that you can pass a class before you can get 100% on it. Don't get so caught up in the information of that tiny thing. If someone asked you a practice problem and you got it wrong, don't get caught up in that tiny information Get the big picture first, right? Boards, for example, are a mile long and an inch deep. Don't obsess over every little thing. And you'll probably have practice with this in taking the OAT as well, is you just need to know the big information and know it all an inch deep before you try to go two inches down in even one spot. 
Don't you dare spend more time studying information than it deserves. Don't give that useless information your brain space. Go study the whole thing once and then you can go a little bit deeper the next time. The best advice I received about the basic science class was if, if you go over all the information at least three times before an exam, you'll never fail. And I found that if you go through it once, well, if you're in class, right, go to all the classes, that's kind of once, and then you look over all your notes again, and then you rewatch all the classes once, that for me is the three times, and that's gotten me 85, 90, 97 once, right? That'll get you really good on the exams if you do that. And if you, right, you just stack each layer on top of it, and each time you'll go just a tiny bit deeper, right? One mile long, but one inch deep. Just know all the information and know how it fits together, and that'll get you there. You'll never ace an exam if you study to ace it. You'll ace an exam if you study to pass it, and then the next time you study to ace it. So those are my 10 steps to acing optometry school and surviving. If you have any other advice to optometry students out there, go ahead and comment it down below. And if you have any advice for me on what, to, what videos to make next, go ahead and comment them down below as well. Go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.